hello there. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, my our deep dark secret is that, yes, the cats gotta get off. Now we must do this again. Someone the other day commented and said that they knew I owned a cat before even seeing it. <laughs> and I don't know if that speaks to the level that my cat shed or is a testament to my inability to completely de-hair myself each time. The United States Barista Championship is about two and a half weeks away. Now that is equally as exciting as it is terrifying. <laughs> now, for the past couple of weeks, we have been talking about like everything involved with this competition from the milk course, which we've talked about freeze distilling milk and how to choose what size beverage you're gonna do, to the scripting, how to write a script, kind of the, the multiple creative ways you can go about it, to also the generalities of like, what is USBC? There's essentially a 15 minute presentation where you are serving a panel of judges, three different courses, an espresso, a milk beverage, and a signature beverage. But if you'd like to learn more about any of those topics, feel free to click one of the top links down in the description below where I've linked the playlist where we're kind of collecting <laughs> all those videos together. But that being said, we have not talked about the bread and butter truly of this competition, which is coffee. And more so than anything else, I am so, so excited to introduce you to the two coffees I'll be using this year that I've just fallen in love with. And I, I'd like to explain to you why I've fallen in love with them, what they taste like, how I'm pulling them, how they're different. Cause truly, they're very, very fascinating to me. I've been so honored to be using them. I'd like to share them with you too. But to do that, I think we should take a little bit of a field trip because we could pull these coffees, you know, at home <laughs> with everything here. But along with sharing these coffees with you, I'd also like to show you where I've been practicing and where I've been like holding up <laughs> for the past three weeks and has essentially been my home away from home, which is gonna be the Black Rabbit Service Co. Training Lab. So with that being said, I think we should we should just like get ready and go out the door. So get on your shoes, pack a bag, uh, get ready to take some coffee because we're about to go after a brief word from today's sponsor. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. I've been wearing Vessis for a while now and they fast become some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from work to my everyday. I wear their weekend model all the time due to its low profile and comfortable fit, but they have something to fit whatever style you like. And since I live in Oregon, which is, if you haven't heard, quite the rainy state in the spring, I definitely have to talk about one of my favorite features of this shoe, which is that these Vessis are 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight Dymatex knit material, meaning that when mistakes, spills, or puddles happen, my feet stay dry. This makes them both the perfect barista shoe and the perfect everyday rainy weather shoe. And their herringbone tread pattern helps them be grippy and safe even when I'm slipping around the cafe. Also, if you get their weekend model dirty, it's no worries because they're machine washable. So easy. So if you want to match with me and get your own pair of Vessies for yourself or even a loved one, I got you. Because Vessi is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code MDC. That's the link in the description and code MDC. Thank you again to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. Okay, everyone, welcome to our, our new location. This is very exciting. Now we are here at Black Rabbit Service Co's training lab. Now Black Rabbit is a company based up here in Portland and they do like everything coffee related, everything from consultations to uh, technician work, to machine repairs, to education, to all sorts of stuff. They're very, very awesome. They've been gracious enough to let me train in their laboratory here. Now, this is really important because during the competition, I'll be using a very specific machine, very specific grinder, and very specific setup to the stage area I'll be presenting on. So being able to practice in at least a very close approximation of that setup is super, super helpful. Now, as I mentioned before, we have two coffees to talk about today. Now, competitors can use one coffee, they can use two coffees, they can use three coffees. It's totally up to them and their routine. Now, in previous years, I have only ever used one coffee. I've used and served that for all three of my courses. However, this year we're using two. There's not really an advantage or disadvantage to either of these methods. There's, there's pros and cons that go into it, but it's very much about what you want to serve and if it fits into your routine. But that being said, I'm using two this year. Two, not four, two. <laughs> So let's talk about them. If you'll notice, <laughs> some of you might recognize the packaging on here. These coffees are from Onyx Coffee Lab. Now I am honored to be partnering with them uh, on this competition season. I'm using the coffees that they have roasted and sourced uh, and I am just, I'm very, very honored to be using these. They are delicious and wonderful and I actually had the opportunity to go to Onyx out in Northwest Arkansas last week to do kind of like a, a coffee training boot camp where we really like dialed in all the last things we need to finalize on my presentation. We did tasting notes, we did all sorts of stuff 
stuff. It was super, super fun, but I came back with a bunch of competition coffee. So now when I'm practicing, I'm able to actually use what I'm gonna be using the day of. So let's start at the beginning with the first coffee I'm gonna be serving. I made the decision this year to start off my routine with my milk course. The order of operations I'm gonna do this year is milk course and then espresso and then signature beverage. Now you can do whatever order you want if you're competing. Kind of the most, the most standard order people do is usually they start with espresso and they build on that to their milk course and they build on that to their signature beverage. However, within the context of my presentation, uh, where we're kind of talking about like meeting people where they are and where people start and gateways into coffee, doing the milk course just made sense to me. So we're starting with that. And that is where our first coffee comes into play. Now, this coffee is only gonna be used in my milk course. And there's kind of a very specific reason to that. But before we get into that, I guess I should tell you <laughs> what's in this bag actually. This coffee right here is called eugenoides. Now that might be a new word to you and don't worry because it was a very new word to me until very recently. Within the world of coffees, there are kind of two main species, if you will, that are used. You have Robusta and you have Arabica. There are more outside of that, but but for the most part, those are like the two, the two big ones you hear most commonly talked about. This, however, is neither of them. Eugenoides is actually uh, one of the parents of modern Arabica. Robusta and Eugenoides pretty much came together uh, to create Arabica. So this is like kind of completely outside of the realm of what we usually drink in specialty coffee. This is pretty much considered a, a resurrected species of coffee. You will find very, very few farms actually growing this. You'll find very few roasters roasting it. It's kind of a little, little hidden gem nowadays, but it's been sweeping the competition stage uh, since about 2015 and really been making a resurgence. Now both this coffee and the other coffee we'll be talking about here come from Colombia. These both come from Finca Immaculata. They were produced by the Holguin family. They are absolutely delicious, but let's just kind of like, let's take a peek at Eugenoides because it both looks very different from most coffees and it acts really different from most coffees. Now the first thing I want to mention is that the beans, <laughs> the actual coffee beans for Eugenoides are very, very, very small. Uh, comparatively to this other coffee I'm using, it's like, it's like half the size. So they're very, very cute. But besides that, Eugenoides extracts differently than Arabica does, which makes it pretty interesting to work with on espresso. Eugenoides is a bit more, I guess, resistant is the best word to extraction. And so the dose and the ratio that we're going to be pulling this under looks different than what you might be used to at home. And that just is kind of like the nature of the beast. This is a coffee that has very, very low acidity. It has acidity and it's complex, but it's much lower. It is much higher uh, on kind of like the sweetness scale. And along with that, this also has very, very low caffeine. Eugenoides has about 50%, 50 to 60% less caffeine than Arabica it does. So incredibly low caffeine, super, super high in the sugar category, and it's super delicious. So I think we should just go over to the machine and we should get some pulling. Okay, so we're here at the bar. And as I mentioned, Eugenoides extracts very differently than Arabica does. So we're actually going to be updosing our input here for our espresso. Now, as a very general statement. Again, there are exceptions. This is not a hard and fast rule, but when you are pulling espresso in the Arabica area, generally your starting parameters are going to be one part of dry espresso in, and then the weight of what you pull out is going to be two parts. So it's a one to two ratio being if you have 20 grams of dry coffee, you'll have 40 grams of espresso at the end. Eugenoides doesn't like that as much. It wants, it wants a much tighter ratio. So we're going to be starting out here with 23 grams of coffee. Just going to kind of dig in there. We'll aim for, try not to drop this very precious coffee on the floor. Perfect, right at around 23 grams of coffee. Now our goal today is to pull about 40 grams out. So 23 grams in and 40 out. We wanna pull it pretty quickly. Like this is gonna be kind of like a gushy shot. <laughs> I wanna be able to pull this in about 23, 24 seconds. So to do that within that parameter, we need to grind our coffee pretty coarse on the espresso scale. Like we're going to start to like kind of exit the espresso grind area for this. This will vary very much uh, grinder to grinder. So I'm not going to talk about what grind setting I'm using, but we're using the EK43S. So I'm going to dump this in here, pop it under, and then we want to make sure we get all that good stuff nice and out right there. That being said, Let's pull some espresso and let's see if we are within parameters. I'm uh, using these dosing cups in competition, by the way. These are from Akaya, I believe. Uh, they're really nice. They, they slot onto your portafilter, give it a tap, and your coffee is now in your portafilter. So we're just gonna, we're gonna level the bed of our coffee. Give it a one-two tap. Using a distributor, and then afterwards. Cool. Okay, we're gonna be pulling this out by weight. 
So I have my scale right here. We're gonna be having two demi toss cups. In competition, the definition of espresso is actually gonna be around one ounce. So when I'm pulling an espresso for the judges, I'm actually just splitting two double shots. So kind of fun fact, that's how we're gonna pull it right now. Slide it under. The drop on that espresso was about three seconds. And again, we are aiming for 40 grams out right here. Cool. So we stopped it a little bit shy of 40 grams, but that's all right. Eugenoides is pretty unique in the sense that it is a very like flexible coffee. No matter how you pull this coffee, uh, kind of within its general parameters, it's gonna taste pretty similar and how it tastes is incredible. So I'm gonna be using my little demi toss spoon here and we're gonna start by stirring this pretty quickly just to incorporate that crema. I'm always so incredibly impressed by how this tastes. Now, this doesn't really taste like coffee, at least not the coffee that most of us know. When we think of espresso, we think of something that is pretty sharp, probably pretty punchy, has like a bright acidity, has very, very concentrated flavors, and that's not exactly what this is. Because of its really low acidity and bitterness, this ends up tasting almost more in line with fruit juice than it does a traditional espresso. Even when you're just smelling the ground beans, it smells so strongly of strawberries and strawberry yogurt. And in the cup, you find like powdered sugar and marshmallow and all these like super confectionery sweet flavors that you just don't always find in non-eugenoides coffee. The texture of it too, because it's such a fast shot, because we're using such a coarse grind, ends up being really juicy and kind of slick. And it doesn't have that kind of like heavier weight that you sometimes find in espressos, especially espressos that are served during the USBC. So this is incredibly unique. But as I mentioned, we're not serving this coffee as an espresso, we're actually pairing this with milk, which I think really like exemplifies this coffee to its peak. Not all coffees uh, pair well with milk, but eugenoides, oh boy. <laughs> eugenoides really, really does. Now, we only have a little bit of our milk left today, so I'll do my best to do this in one shot, but this right here is freeze distilled milk. If you didn't watch my video on it a couple weeks ago, this is what was made of a whole milk that was completely frozen, and then about half of its volume was melted off. Now that first half that melted off is a majority sugars, fats, and protein. So we end up with something that is very, very thick, very, very sweet and fatty, and it pairs wonderfully with coffee. And when we pair it with the Eugenoides espresso, you get a final beverage that is so stinking confectionery. Like it is absolutely delicious. You get notes like melted ice cream. You get notes like yellow cake batter. You get notes of like hot chocolate. And it's just, it's so, so good. So I'm gonna make some right here for you now. We gotta go back, back to the machine. Do you like my, my little apron? This is the fit today. <laughs> All right, so let's make some milk bevies. Okay, the Eugenoides, because it is such a fast shot, has kind of a weak crema, which makes it pretty interesting to pour into. And this right here is a Eugenoides milk beverage. Don't look at this one. This one was a bad. <laughs> Don't look at him. He's a little he's a little bit of an ugly duck here. But also, <laughs> if you're curious, this is the design I'm gonna be pouring in all of my milk beverages for the USBC. It's a one little base. The second layer gets pushed pretty tightly in it so that bottom base starts to wrap. Then it's a little heart on top. So if you're curious, <laughs> that can be kind of a, a fun fact for you. Now I'll, I'll save this one because it looks the prettiest, but we'll taste this other one here. The texture of these two paired together is extremely thick. This is a very buttery drink and it's a drink that has a very long lasting finish. It sticks in the back of your palate and it tastes very much like cocoa at the end. It feels like you're drinking a hot chocolate in a way, but those original very, very fruity, very sugary notes of like strawberry and marshmallow have been transformed in the pairing of this milk with this espresso. We've ended up with something that tastes like, <laughs> it tastes like cake. It tastes like sweet vanilla melted ice cream. It is just so ridiculously good. It feels, it feels it feels indulgent. <laughs> it feels very, very indulgent. And in fact, camera person, if you would like some Eugenoides coffee, you are welcome to drink the blessed drink. 
What the heck? Isn't it so good? Wow. Wow, he says. <laughs> that is pretty incredible. This is kind of a, a once in a lifetime milk beverage. And I'm, I'm very honored to be able to use this coffee and to serve it because it truly is incredible. If you ever have the chance to get your hands on some Eugenoides coffee, purely from like a scientific standpoint, I highly recommend it because flavor wise, it's astounding. It's very, very delicious. But the way it extracts is also so interesting that I think it's a fun kind of like test of your own skill about figuring out how this coffee extracts and pulls and dialing it into your own needs. Now, that was a very long-winded explanation of the first coffee I'll be using, but I'm using a second one, so let's talk about that. Now, I'm gonna continue drinking my uh, my Eugenoides Cortado while we talk about this next coffee because I very much do not want this to go to waste. So my stomach be darned, we're gonna finish this off. However, we have two courses left in the USBC. We have our espresso, we also have our signature beverage. And this is the coffee we're gonna be using for both of them. This is a coffee that is still produced in Colombia at Finca Immaculata by the Whole Green family. This now, we're going back to Arabica. This is the Sudan Rume varietal. This is a natural process with an anaerobic fermentation and it is a coffee that is very, very tropical. I would describe that as kind of its, its core characteristic, but beyond that, it has a really, really nice bright acidity. It's got a lovely like medium weight. It's got a super like kind of like slick and round mouthfeel and all in all, it just performs super, super well as espresso. Now, as exciting as this coffee is coming off of Eugenoides, this is definitely a little bit more tame. This is definitely a little bit more of like a, a more, not normal, I don't want to call it, but it's, it's a more like drinkable coffee <laughs> in your day to day. But because this is Arabica, because this falls within all those kind of more familiar families, we're gonna pull this a little bit more similarly to how you might be familiar with it at home. So let's go back to the machine. Now, besides this being Arabica versus Eugenoides, this is just a very different coffee than Eugenoides. So when I'm on stage and grinding my coffee, one of the one of the main things I need to remember is to change my grind size, like halfway through grinding. This is definitely one of the more challenging aspects of using two coffees, is that instead of just dialing in for one and kind of just going with that the entire way through, I now have two coffees that act very differently. They need to be ground differently and they need to be pulled at different times. So it's kind of like, there's a little bit more more like mental gymnastics that has to go into it. But that being said, we're gonna go back to our standard grind size for espresso. Make sure we just knock out anything that's up there. Now the parameters for my espresso change kind of day to day as this coffee ages, as a whole bunch of variables change. But right now I am pulling this with 20.5 grams of coffee in, a little bit more, <laughs> a little more standard dosage in. We're actually taking this bigger than a one to two ratio. I am aiming for about 48 grams out. So 20 grams in ish and then 48 grams out. I find that with this coffee, that is a really, really nice place to be with it being a little bit bigger. You get a, a more developed sweetness and you get a better balance with that sweetness and then kind of the punchy bright acidity that's also in this coffee. Back in we go. We're gonna aim for this espresso to pull in about 25, 26 seconds. A Little bit longer than the Eugenoides as well. Already, you can visually see it's a much slower flow of coffee coming out. All right, so right around 48 grams out, there will always be like a little bit of variation, like 49 versus 48 doesn't make a huge difference when it comes to espresso. Once more, we have our spoon. As you can see, this has a, a pretty solid crema. I want to incorporate that before I drink it. So we're gonna do some nice steady stirring here. You can also just visually see that this is a, a pretty big shot being so close to 50 grams. Flavor-wise, this one is so much punchier than the Eugenoides. Instead of having that very, very soft, like the rounded flavors of strawberry yogurt and marshmallow and powdered sugar, you end up with something that is that is bright. It is tropical. It is like ripe papaya. Um, it is stuff like, you know, like raspberry or like very, very fresh strawberry. And you end up with like this kind of like grapefruit acidity. That's really, really nice. It sticks to your palate and it's super, super pleasant when in balance with the sweetness in this coffee. Overall, this is a much more balanced coffee I would describe between the acidity and the sweetness, which is why we're essentially using it as our espresso course and in our signature beverage. The Eugenoides is delicious. It is wonderful and an extremely beautiful coffee. But that being said, when you're evaluating it kind of on the scale of espresso, sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult to judge because 
because it is so different than Arabica. But that being said, another wonderful coffee, just very different. Arguably, these are kind of like, <laughs> these are very much like opposite coffees, which is really fun to pair them together, frankly. I'm gonna keep sipping on this, but let's go, let's go back over there and let's wrap this up. So I hope this was a fun introduction to the two coffees that I'm very, very excited to be serving at the United States Barista Championship this year. Again, working with Onyx on these has been absolutely phenomenal. I'll link actually all the information about these coffees down below. Onyx has done a wonderful job with transparency about how they source their coffees, where they're from, the cost behind all of these, um, and it's, it's just really interesting information, even if you don't necessarily like know all the nitty gritty about it. So I'll link that all below. And that being said, I hope you had a nice time. I'm gonna do my best to hang out in the comments for a bit on this video, at least in the beginning. So if you have any very general questions, I'll do my best to answer them. But these are the coffees. I am so excited about them and I, I hope you are too. And I hope this was a good description so that if any of you tune into the live stream for this presentation, you'll at least have some context to what the judges are tasting as well. As always, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee. Uh, pretty much everywhere that I'm active. You can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus many, many shorts. <laughs> you can find me on TikTok and Instagram almost every single day. And yeah, this was a fun, a fun field trip video. And I hope you learned a little bit of something. I've definitely been learning a lot over these past few weeks and it's all very, very exciting. So until next time, I hope you have a good day. And yeah, bye everyone. Whoa, gosh. <laughs>